Hi, my name is Philip King. Welcome to this tutorial series on writing a WordPress plugin. Since each of the tutorials in this series builds on each other, I recommend you progress through the tutorials in the order they are presented. All the code for these tutorials will be shown in the videos, but obviously you cannot copy the code using cut and paste from a video. So a text version of the code, along with the videos and a PDF version of the series, is available on my website. The link is shown below. In the previous lesson, we covered the introduction to plugins. In this lesson, we'll cover the naming and declaration of a WordPress plugin and create the main PHP plugin file. This file has a predefined comment section called the header comment that is used by WordPress both to register and declare the plugin availability to the WordPress installation. The plugin structure. You may be wondering why we need to discuss the structure of your plugins. Well, the structure of your plugin is important for two reasons. One, to avoid naming collision, not just in your own code, but with the thousands of other plugins available. Two, to enable other plugin writers easy access to your code. I know everyone has their own way of working, but if you follow a simple structural way of working, life becomes easier for everyone, and that can't be a bad thing. The plugin name. The first task in creating a WordPress plugin is to create a unique name for your plugin. Choose a name that describes what your plugin does. For instance, a weather-related plugin would probably have the word weather in the name, such as PK Weather Map. Your unique name can be multiple words. It's a good idea to prefix your chosen plugin name with your initials, or the initials of your website. This also helps guarantee the uniqueness of the name. To verify the uniqueness of your plugin's name, explore the official WordPress plugins repository. Also, you can do a Google search on your proposed name and related keywords for the type of functionality you are seeking. The plugin file structure. All WordPress plugins must be installed in the WP Content Plugins folder. You could just drop your files into this folder, but just think how confusing that would become, even with just a handful of plugins installed. Just remember, everyone places their plugins in this folder, so no two plugins can have the same name. With potentially thousands of files stored here, the situation would soon become chaotic. So don't do it. Instead, Always create a folder for your plugin, even if your plugin consists of only one file. I'm sure you'll agree, having a folder structure is a much cleaner and better idea. When creating your folder and file structure, to comply with WordPress standards, do not use spaces or special characters. Separate words with a hyphen. Your plugin folder structure should consist of one folder which takes the name of your plugin and contains all your related plugin folders and files. The only file which must be in your plugins directory is a PHP file which has the same name as the folder, your plugin name. Subfolders for all codes such as PHP, JavaScript, CSS, images, etc. should also be created within the main folder to keep related code. If you intend to distribute your plugin through WordPress, you will also need to include a README text file. We'll discuss that file structure in more detail another time. WordPress does recommend the inclusion of a README file for all your plugins. A description of the format can be found at wordpress.org extend plugins about README text. WordPress also provides a README file validator at wordpress.org extend plugins about validator. So they must consider the inclusion of this file important. The standard plugin header. For WordPress to recognize your plugin, the top of your plugin's main PHP file must contain a standard plugin information header comment. This header comment lets WordPress recognize that your plugin exists, add the plugin to the plugin management screen so it can be activated, load the plugin, and run the functions of the plugin. Without the header, your plugin will never be activated and will never run. The header comment format consists of the plugin name, plugin URI, plugin's description, the version number, the author, that's you, the author's URI, and the license, usually GPL2. The minimum information WordPress needs in order to recognize your plugin is the plugin name line. The rest of the information will be used to create the table of plugins in the plugin management screen. The order of the lines is not important. The license slug 
should be a short, common identifier for the license the plugin is under, usually GPL2, and is meant to be a simple way of being explicit about the license of the code. It's customary to follow the standard header with information about licensing for the plugin. As stated, most plugins use the GPL2 license used by WordPress, or a license compatible with GPL2. To indicate a GPL2 license, just include the standard license declaration in your plugin. This can be found at the WordPress Codex. OK, let's create our plugins folder and the main PHP file. Then we'll edit the main PHP file and add the comment header and licensing info. I'll be using PDT Eclipse for this, but you can choose whichever text editor you prefer. The first thing we need to do, if using PDT Eclipse, is to create a new project. So select the new menu item, then select the PHP project menu item, enter the project name, PK plugin class, select the create project at existing location radio button, then enter the location of your WordPress installation, and click the finish button to create the project. Now we need to open the WordPress plugin folder, WP Content Plugins, so we can create our plugins folder. Once in the WP Content Plugins folder, we can create our plugins folder, PK Plugins class. Now we just need to create our plugins PHP file, PK Plugin class .php, in this folder. Once the file is created, we can open the PK Plugin class .php file for editing and enter both the edit comment information and our license info into the file. I've already prepared my data, so I'm just going to paste it in. Don't forget to enter your copyright details as stipulated in the licensing file. And don't forget to close the PHP tag. I usually always begin by entering the opening and closing PHP tags. This stops me forgetting the closing tag. It also helps prevent entering whitespace before the opening PHP tag or after the closing PHP tag. Whitespace in either of these areas will give us headers already sent errors. Finally, we can save the file. OK, we have our plugin files installed. Let's see how it looks in WordPress. Log into WordPress as the administrator. From the dashboard, click the Installs Plugins menu item. You should see that our plugin has been recognized by WordPress, and the details are as per our plugin comment field statements. If you want to do a quick modification to the plugin, you can click the Edit link to open the plugin file in the WordPress editor. A little warning at this point, if you enter invalid code, you could crash WordPress. So be very careful if you're trying this out on your live site. When you've finished editing the file, simply click the Installed Plugins menu item to return to the Plugins page. To activate the plugin, you could click the Activate tag. But as we haven't told our plugin to do anything, nothing will happen. You could also delete the plugin by clicking the Delete tag. But as we'll be using this file in the next lesson, I suggest you keep the file for the present. I would normally recommend you always deactivate your plugin after testing. This will help prevent WordPress crashing should you inadvertently have errors in your code. Well, that's all for this tutorial on the naming and declaration of a WordPress plugin. You should feel quite comfortable with the techniques needed to name, declare and create the files needed for your plugin after this lesson. If you don't, just delete the plugin and go through the lessons again. See you in the next lesson when we will discuss and implement the plugin's class structure.